Journey to the West, an audio drama series. Chapter Nine, Part Two. The Dragon King left and went out of Chang'an to return to his river residence. The various water gods received him and asked, "How was your visit to the fortune teller, Great King?" The Dragon King answered, "I did visit him. Visited him indeed." He was nothing more than a fortune teller of lip service. I asked him when there would be rain. He said tomorrow. I asked him for the exact time and depth. He said, "Cloud will gather during the fifth shichen of tomorrow. Thunder will strike during the sixth. By the seventh shichen there will be rain, and by the eighth the rain will be enough. The fallen rain water will measure three shi and three point four eight tsun in depth." I made a bet with him. If things are exactly the way he said, I will give him a reward of fifty taels of gold. Should his prediction be off by even the smallest bit, I will break through his door and drive him off his seat, so he can no longer deceive the people of Chang'an. The river creatures all laughed and said, "Our great king is the chief commander of all eight rivers surrounding Chang'an. He is the great dragon god in charge of rain." Rain or no rain, only the great king knows for sure. How dare he talk such nonsense? The fortune teller is sure to lose, sure to lose. Just as everyone was happily chatting over the matter, a voice could be heard from midair saying, "Dragon King of the Jin River, prepare to receive an imperial edict." The crowd looked up and found a mighty guardian in gold. He was holding the edict from the Jade Emperor in his hands and came straight for the river residence. The Dragon King panicked and tidied his clothes to appear more solemn. After lighting incense, he received the edict. The mighty guardian in gold returned to the skies before the Dragon King thanked the throne and opened up the edict. On it was the following. The chief of the A Rivers is ordered to call up thunder and lightning. Rain shall be provided tomorrow morning to benefit the city of Chang'an. The time and death were also exactly the same as the fortune teller predicted. This shocked the Dragon King's soul out of his body. In a moment, when he finally woke up from fainting, he said to the water creatures, "A miraculous man like him does exist in the mortal world." He truly understands the weight of heaven and earth, but that would mean losing to him. His shat counselor said, "Calm your heart, Grey King. How hard could it be to win? I, your subject, have a little suggestion that will surely silence that brute's mouth." The Dragon King asked what the suggestion was. The counselor answered. Changing the time of rain and deducting a fraction of rainfall would be enough to prove his predictions wrong. Why fear losing then? By then you can break his signs to pieces and chase him onto the road. How hard could it be? The Dragon King agreed to his plans and stopped worrying. The next day, the Dragon King summoned the Elder of Wind, Thunder God, Youth of Clouds, and Mother of Lightning. Straight to the skies above Chang'an, he waited until the sixth shichen to spread clouds, the seventh shichen to release thunder, and the eighth shichen to drop rain. And at the ninth shichen, rain was stopped, measuring only three shi and point four tsun in depth. So the time was pushed forward by one shichen, and rainfall was deducted by three point zero eight tsun. After the rain. The relevant officials were told to withdraw. This time, the Dragon King again landed his cloud and turned into a scholar in white. He went all the way to the main street by the west gate and burst into Yuan Shoucheng's fortune-telling booth. Without any explanation, he smashed all the signs, brushes, and inkstones. The fortune teller, however, only sat in his chair, not moving even a little bit. The Dragon King then grabbed the door plank and began punching it while spouting insults. 
His is a demonic man who bluffs about the woe and world of life, and a rascal who is here to delude the hearts of the people. Your predictions were off, and your words were wildly incorrect. None of what you said about today's ring, the time or death, ends up matching reality, and you are somehow still sitting here looking all dignified. Get out soon, and you will be spared the death penalty. Shou Cheng, on the other hand, still looked calm and not at all afraid. Looking up into the skies, he sneered. I have no fears. No fears at all. I do not have any crime punishable by death. I'm afraid you will get the death penalty instead. Others may be easy to fool, but not me. I know you. You are no scholar, but the Dragon King of the Jing River. You violated the Imperial Edict of the Jade Emperor by changing the time and deducting rainfall. You have broken the laws of heaven. I fear you won't be able to escape a slash at the dragon gorging platform, yet you are here insulting me. His words shook the dragon king to his core. As his hair stood on end and his bones went weak, the dragon king hurriedly threw away the door plank and tidy his clothes. Prostrating to the fortune teller, he begged, Please forgive me, dear Tisha. I was merely kidding before. Who could have thought that false words would come true? I indeed violated the laws of heaven. What am I to do now? Please save me, dear teacher, please. Otherwise, I won't let you off even if I die. Shou Cheng said, I cannot save you. The only thing I can do is to offer a way for you to stay alive. The dragon said, I am willing to receive your teachings. The fortune teller said, Tomorrow, at three-eighths into the seventh Shichen, you will be sent for beheading under the supervision of Chief Justice of Humans, Wei Zheng. If you wish to hold on to your life, you had better hurry to tell the Emperor Tang Taizong as soon as possible. Wei Zheng serves under the Tang Emperor as Prime Minister. If you can ask for a favor from them, you shall be fine. The Dragon King took the advice and bid farewell in tears. Soon, the rest sun sank into the west as the moon and stars rose into the skies. The Dragon King of the Jing River didn't return to his river residence, but instead remained in the air. He waited until around midnight when he withdrew all the cloud and mist and came straight to the palace gates. At the same time, the Tang Emperor was dreaming of himself walking out of the gate. He was just strolling under the moonlight and the shade of blossoms, when suddenly the Dragon King changed into human form and kowtowed before him, yelling, Save me, your majesty! Save me! Taizong asked, who are you that we could save you? The Dragon King answered, Your majesty are the true dragon, whereas I am a sinful one. I, your subject, have violated heavenly laws and will be beheaded by your majesty's virtuous official, the Chief Justice of Humans, Wei Zheng. That's why I have come to beg you. Please save me, your majesty. Please. Taizong said. If Wei Zheng is the one overseeing the beheading, we will be able to save you. Go now and no need to worry. The Dragon King was delighted and left after kowtowing in thanks. And so Taizong woke up from the dream and couldn't stop thinking about it. When it came time for morning court, he gathered his civil and military officials in the main hall. It was a most noble and grand occasion. The emperor and his subjects got along well. Their manners and music closely resembled the great dynasties of the past. Surrounded by elegant and priceless ornaments, every person present looked as refined as they were mighty. After all the formalities, the officials lined up according to their posts. 
The Tang Emperor flashed his majestic eyes to survey his subordinates one by one. Each and every one of them looked dignified and solemn. However, one man was missing. Prime Minister Wei Zheng. The Tang Emperor called to his adviser Xu Shiji and asked, We had a strange dream during the night where a man came to visit us. He claimed to be the Dragon King of the Jing River who violated the heavenly laws. He was supposed to be beheaded by the Chief Justice of Humans, Wei Zheng, and begged us to save him. We have already made a promise, yet Wei Zheng is the only person absent from today's session. Why? Shi Ji answered, This dream could be real. Wei Zheng must be summoned to court at once. Do not let him out of the gates, your majesty. When the day has passed, you should be able to save the dragon from the dream. The Tang Emperor was overjoyed. He then released an edict and had a court aide deliver it so Wei Zheng could be summoned into the palace. We will speak now of Prime Minister Wei Zheng. He was in his residence during the night, reading the stars as incense burned next to him. Then, he heard cranes crying from above the clouds as a heavenly messenger arrived with a golden edict from the Jade Emperor. Wei Zheng was ordered to behead the old dragon of the Jing River in his dreams tomorrow, at three-eighths into the seventh Shichen. The Prime Minister thanked heaven for the grace before starting a vegetarian diet and cleaning himself. Since then, he had been meditating at home. By wielding the sword of wisdom in his mind, he focused all his energy on the spirit, which was why he didn't go to court. But now, a court aide arrived with an edict to summon him. Wei Zheng was flustered, but dared not disobey the emperor's orders. So he hurried up and tidied his clothes before entering the palace with the edict. When he reached the throne, he kowtowed to apologize for his crimes. The Tang Emperor said, We forgive your crimes. At the time, the other officials had not withdrawn from court. But as soon as Wei Zheng arrived, the Emperor ordered the curtains to be raised and court dismissed. The only person who needed to stay behind was Wei Zheng. The Emperor invited him into the residential quarters and started discussing strategies to run the country. Soon, it was the end of the sixth Shichen, approaching the seventh. The emperor ordered palace servants to bring a large weighty set, saying, May we and our virtuous minister have a game. Weiqi is a traditional Chinese board game between two people, each holding black or white stones as pieces. The royal concubines thereby brought the weighty board and set up the imperial desk for the game. Wei Zheng thanked the emperor for the offer, and joined the game with him. We do not know who will win in the end. Please wait until the next chapter. <laughs>